All right, so in the last example, we saw how you can load text and then to put it onto an image, which then allows us to do some cool effects that we wouldn't otherwise be able to do um, with normal drawing commands. Um, in this example, we'll use the same idea, applying text to an image, um, but we'll use it then to drive to derive points that will allow us to draw shapes and, and do really cool stuff that way too. Um, so I'm calling this the easy way. In the next video, we'll look at a much more mathematical way of doing the same thing. Um, but for a lot of us, this just uses basic P5.js stuff and it's pretty straightforward to do. Um, the typeface that I'm using for this is called um, ZXX. And um, there's a really nice article in the Walker Art Center's blog, The Gradient, about this, uh, about the development of it. It's written by the author of the font, Sung Moon. Um, and it's a really nice, cool project. I really love this font. Um, but the idea is that it's meant to be readable by humans, but not by computers. So computer vision systems, optical character recognition can't read this, but it's meant so that it can be read by a person which is pretty cool. We're gonna use the least sort of wild and crazy version of this font here, um, but um, I'll include a link to this article because it's really cool. Um, and so I've gone ahead and just set everything up already here. I've got my um, canvas and I've got my font loaded. Um, so let's say you know we had some text on the screen and we wanna be able to draw shapes in those positions. Maybe we don't wanna be stuck with flat text and we wanna be able to have cool animated stuff around that. Um, we'll see, like I said, we'll see in the next example, uh, a more complicated way of doing this, but we're gonna look at kind of a straightforward P5.js way here. We are gonna code this whole thing. So if you wanna just jump ahead and look at the code and see how it works um, and not watch the whole video, that's totally cool. But this is gonna be kind of an in-depth dig into how we're gonna do this. And we'll do the same um, with the next example. So this is the easy way, next one will be the hard way. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do a really similar thing from the last video where we're gonna display some text. But in this case, I'm just gonna do it right in the canvas. Um, it's just gonna be easier. I'm gonna draw over it in the draw function so I can just use my canvas here. So I'm gonna say background 255. My text font is gonna be my font. Text size, be nice and big. I'm gonna do the centered. My text is gonna be um, black with no stroke. And my text will just, you know, you can do whatever here. We'll just do it right in the center. Um, so if I turn off the background, this is the text that I've created. So big letters on the screen with a white background. I need that contrast. So I want my text to be um, black and I want my background to be white um, because I'm gonna access the pixels on the screen and use those to determine points. Um, now, if I wanted to go through and I went through every single pixel, then these letters are gonna be made up of thousands and thousands of, of points, which is way more than I need. It's gonna bog my computer down. So instead, I'm gonna make a variable called grid size. And um, grid size, I'm gonna set it to 10. We could dial this in and see how we like this. Um, but that's gonna allow me to change, you know, kind of the granularity here and see how that works. Then what I can do, and this is all in setup because I'm doing this at the very beginning. Um, I can do this command called load pixels. And we're gonna talk a lot more about pixel access and stuff like that in the next section. Um, so this isn't really stuff we've covered too much, but um, hopefully the idea here makes sense. So load pixels gets us a list of all the pixels on our canvas. And then we can go through our grid. So we'll make a Y variable, uh, grid size, same for X. And that'll let us walk through our image um, by that grid. Then I wanna get uh, a pixel at that location. And I can use the command get here, x, y, and that's gonna get me a single pixel. And I wanna get the red value from this pixel. Um, pixels in P5.js are little lists. They've got four numbers, red, green, blue, and alpha or transparency. So red is pixel, um, the value of pixel at index zero. So that gives me that red. Then um, I wanna be able to know whether this um, uh, pixel is white or black. 
Um, now I could compare the whole pixel value, but um, in this case, we're gonna do this very simple algorithm that does thresholding. If the value is um, darker than kind of halfway, it's gonna be considered black. If it's lighter, it's gonna be considered white. Lots more detail about this to come in our next section, but I'm just gonna say if red is less than 127, um, then I wanna add this point. And so for that, I'm gonna to need to create a list. And we'll call this points, and that'll be a blank array. And then I'm gonna say points.push. And for this, how do I wanna store my X and Y? I'm gonna do it as a vector. So I'm gonna say create vector X and Y. A vector is um, a two-dimensional or a three-dimensional uh, point, and P5JS gives us access to this as a really easy way to store that. So I've got my points here. Let's go ahead and make sure everything worked right, and we can just log this to the console. And so now I see my array, it's got 400 values in it. That seems about right to me. And then each one is gonna contain an X and a Y position, which is perfect. Now, then I can go into my draw and um, let's do kind of a nice light color here. Um, now I can draw with those points. So I can say uh, four, let I equal zero, I is less than points dot length. And um, I like to get these variables out just because it makes it a little easier to see. So this would be points i dot x. Y is gonna be the same thing like that. And then we could draw a point at that or a circle or whatever, something at this spot. So I'm gonna say fill, um, let's do it the same color with a stroke of like kind of a dark gray and that'll be at X and Y. And then let's make it the same size as our grid. So now you can see this kind of cool like gridded circles um, that results. So it's drawing a dot. If the pixel color was dark enough, um, it's gonna draw a dot there. And if I change this grid size, even just a little bit by one pixel, well, maybe that won't change it too much. That actually looks pretty good. If I keep bumping this up, you can see how it starts, you know, it's basically like pixelating this image. So if I make it bigger, it's gonna become lower and lower resolution, which could be really fun. You might really be able to transform this font in a way that you weren't expecting um, by doing this. I'm gonna put that back down to 10. Um, now I wanna be able to have these things um, sort of like disintegrate or move. The whole point of doing this was to be able to get these shapes and be able to do something cool with them. Um, so I'm gonna create this variable called mutation amount, and I'm gonna map that mouse x zero to width. And um, I've kind of played with some values here that kind of make sense. I'm gonna do it three, which means, so this mutation will be sort of like random offset. Um, three meaning they're always gonna be a little offset. They're never gonna end up in this perfect grid. And then the maximum will be width divided by six. And this is just numbers from me playing around. Now, I'm also gonna add random seed here in the draw, and we'll come back and talk about why this is important. And then um, every time I go around my for loop, I've got my X and Y. I don't wanna permanently change those, but I, since I've grabbed those values, now I can go random between negative mutation amount and mutation amount. And I can do the same for Y. And now when we run this, you can see on my left side, they're always a little offset. So they're no longer in that perfect grid, which I kind of like. And then as I move it across, they move out, totally scattered and chaotic, and then they come back. Now, if I didn't have the random seed here, maybe you can guess what's gonna happen. Um, since random changes every frame, they even when they're still, they do this wiggling thing and it becomes this kind of like chaotic cloud, which is maybe what you're after. But I wanna be able to have this kind of controlled and repeatable scattering. So by resetting random seed, remember random is just an algorithm. It generates nice random numbers, but it's doing it um, according to a process. So by resetting that every frame, um, my random is always the same. So as I move out, it's always gonna be the same. And when I come back, they go to the same position, which is what I want in this case. I'm gonna add one more thing here, which I think will be kind of cool. Um, I think these would look nice with a little shadow. 
So I'm going to make this, a, the shadow will be a fill of zero with 50% um, alpha and no stroke. And I'm going to draw this at um, x plus 2, y plus 2. And even a little change like this, I think, totally transforms the feel. Now these have this kind of cartoony, bubbly, cellular kind of look as they move. Um, real simple. And because I'm using the same background color, or the same fill color as the background, um, it's subtle. It almost looks like a drawing or something like that, which I also really like. Um, and these are like little details that I think are really worth playing with in your sketches. Simple things like a shadow or styling, or maybe you draw these circles in Illustrator and give them kind of a cool thing, or maybe their faces, or you've drawn them like cells and they've got little wiggling parts or whatever. Um, these demos really just show you the ideas. It's then for you to pour cool art stuff into this as you're working. Um, so, like I said, this is the um, easy way to extract points from text. Um, in the next example, we're going to look at a much mathier way of doing the same thing. Um, but this is cool because it just uses basic processing uh, P5.js stuff that we've done so far.